This is a scan through laser effects module that I recently got from John Laughlin at Technological Artisans. It's a fairly traditional device for creating laser effects. Inside, there's a couple of stepper motors, a wheel, and some gears. The wheel has six apertures, five of which have diffraction grating or other effects. The sixth aperture is clear, and this is the default. The position of the wheel is controlled by DMX. The second stepper drives a gear system. This allows gratings in the apertures to rotate independently of the main wheel. Speed and direction of this motor can also be controlled by DMX. The external I.O. is pretty simple. There's power in, DMX in and out, and a nice little OLED display with a single knob that allows you to set the DMX universe. Typically, these would be controlled by a DMX console. This is mine. It works fine with the effects module, but it's also kind of fragile and bulky to travel with. You can also control the unit from DMX events on your laser show timeline. Here's an example with LSX. It's very, very simple to configure and operate. More and more, I'm doing live radiator work. So putting DMX events on a timeline wouldn't make sense, and I'd rather not lug a console around when I'm only using two channels of data. I've been using an Elgato Stream Deck to send MIDI commands to radiators, and it made sense to me to try to use it also to control this module. Unfortunately, I was unable to find a simple DMX control plugin. I did find some plugins, but they all seemed to be for talking to back-end lighting show control packages, and that was just really totally overkill for my needs. I was able to find an OSC plugin on GitHub for the Stream Deck. I have exactly zero experience with DMX, but I have considerable experience working with the OSC protocol, and I figured at the end of the day, data is data, so maybe I could just send OSC and create an OSC to DMX bridge. I started by installing the plugin and configuring buttons on the Stream Deck to send OSC strings on port 7777 to a Raspberry Pi that I had sitting around. Here I'm using an Intech DMX King USB to DMX dongle. Once I plugged it into the Pi, it was happily recognized without any drivers needing to be loaded. USB Devices shows it as a DMX USB Pro as device 5 on bus 001, and LSUSB shows that it's running a future technology device's serial UART, and it appears as expected as dev TTY USB 0. On the Raspberry Pi side, I've written this code, and what this code does is it starts by opening a connection to the USB port. This is how it talks to the DMX King. And then it starts the OSC listener. And this is just uh, listens for network traffic on port 7777 coming in on the NICs of the Pi. Once it gets that traffic, it parses it and cleans it up a little bit and extracts just the string data that's being sent from the stream deck. And once that data's here, we split that up into universe value one and value two. And those two values are our channels. Once we've done that, we build the, the packet, the datagram of information that we're sending to the DMX controller. Uh, we know that it needs to start with a zero. And then we have these three values, the universe, the two channels, and then we pad out the rest of the packet uh, with zeros up to 512 bytes because that's what DMX expects. Uh, this is just a, a very quick bit of debugging information that shows me the data that's in the packet that we're sending. And then uh, this writes that data to the DMX king. And there's a little bit of information here that took me a long time to figure out. This wakes up the DMX King and turns it into transmit uh, mode instead of receive mode. And that's a thing that I didn't find well documented in any of the APIs and it took me quite some time to, to figure out. Uh, but that's really basically it. It's, it's quite a simple bit of code. There's some extra code in here uh, that handles some case conditions because we want to be able to rotate the large wheels position without impacting the rotation of the effects themselves. So in some cases, uh, we send X's here, and when an X comes in, it tells the code to use the previous value that was sent there instead of sending a zero. And that way, uh, the behavior works as expected. The, the individual effect can be rotating while the wheel is changing position, or the wheel position stays where you expect it to, even though the rotation of the effect changes or stops or speeds up or, or anything like that.